let's go off on our travels around the galaxy again, and this time we're going a little further afield than of late, and we're going to pay a visit to a planet that, whilst not being Earth's twin, certainly might be Earth's sort of cousin. We're going to pay a visit to Kepler-452. Let's find out more. Point yourself in the direction of the constellation Cygnus, though you'll need a telescope. Kepler-452 is too dim to be seen with the naked eye. Just about here is the star we're looking for. Kepler-452 is about 1,402 light years away. We have no such worries about the distance as we have our space and time machine to climb into and prepare ourselves for the short journey. And look, we're here already. Before we do any planetary exploration, let's have a look at the parent star. Kepler-452 is a G-type star. That's the same class of star that our Sun belongs to, and it is indeed quite similar to the Sun. When comparing the two stars, we find that Kepler-452 is 3.7% more massive and has a radius 11% larger than that of our Sun. It's also 20% more luminous, though the two stars have almost exactly the same surface temperature. So, Kepler-452 is quite similar to our Sun. What about any planets orbiting this star? Well, we've actually found a planet orbiting it. It orbits at 156 million kilometres away. That's just a little bit further out than the Earth orbits our Sun. So, so far, the two star systems look very similar. Well, let's have a closer look at this planet then. Kepler-452b has a radius considerably larger than the Earth, about 1.5 times the radius of our home world, and has roughly five times its mass. Due to the similar distance in orbit that it has to the Earth, it has an equilibrium temperature just slightly higher than here on Earth. So what is this equilibrium temperature then? Well, planets that have atmospheres are able to prevent a portion of the heat from the sun from escaping back out into space. They also block some of the energy from getting down to the planet. This means that planetary temperatures are affected by their atmosphere. On our moon, which is about the same distance to the sun as the Earth, the daytime temperature can get as high as 100 degrees Celsius, or 212 Fahrenheit. On the night side of the moon, temperatures plummet to a frosty minus 173 degrees C, or minus 280 Fahrenheit. The equilibrium temperature of a planet is sort of the theoretical temperature on that planet if the atmosphere was removed and just takes into account the heating from the star. Kepler-452b lies well within the habitable zone for its star, and again in a similar position to the Earth within the habitable zone maybe just a little closer due to the star Kepler-452 being slightly more luminous. So what could Kepler-452b be like then? Well, before we look at some possibles, our total understanding of this planet is based on very limited evidence, so in all honesty we don't really know. But let's leave that aside and have a think about what the planet could be like. Well firstly, having five times the mass of the Earth, the surface gravity on Kepler-452b will be 1.9 times that here on Earth. So what would that feel like? Well, just imagine carrying yourself, a slightly thinner version of yourself, around all the time. If we were to stand on the surface of Kepler-452b, just moving around would be tiring. Our heart would have to work much harder to pump blood up to our brains against the increased gravity. We may even feel light-headed, and not just with the excitement of stepping out onto an alien world. Due to the planet's larger size and higher density than the Earth, it may well be a rocky planet, dominated by volcanic activity, and this may result in thick clouds covering the surface of the planet. This then could mean that Kepler-452b has a runaway greenhouse effect, as found here in our solar system on the planet Venus. As suns age, the amount of energy that they release changes. Kepler-452 is about 6 billion years old, that's about 1.5 billion years older than our sun. As a result, this star emits more radiation than it would have done a billion years ago. On the planet then, the presence of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, if it had one, would mean that incoming radiation 
wouldn't be able to be easily lost to space. These increasing temperatures would boil the oceans and gradually the water vapour will be lost to the vacuum of space desiccating the planet. This may well have been the fate of Venus and may ultimately be the fate of the Earth in about a billion years time if we don't hasten things up beforehand. This may also have been the fate of Kepler 452b. However, because this planet is considerably larger than the Earth with a higher gravity and a larger mass, this may slow the heating of the planet and allow it to hold on to its water for longer. This would give it an extended stay in the range of conditions that would make life as we know it more feasible. It's interesting to imagine what the conditions on the planet might be like, though at the moment we have absolutely no way of confirming any of these ideas. They are instead based on what we know about planetary and solar system formation. Kepler 452 is over 1400 light years away, so any ideas of getting there anytime soon are sadly not going to be realised. For us however in our space and time machine, the vast distances of space are not a problem. From our vantage point here at Kepler 452, if we look back towards the Earth, and we had instruments advanced enough to see the Earth, which of course we do, we'd see a very different Earth from the one of today. We'd see the Earth of 600 AD. Books have just started to be printed in China, the Moche culture in South America is coming to an end, and in Europe, smallpox arrives for the first, but not the last time. Well, let's get back aboard our space and time machine for the short trip back to the relative comfort of the Earth. And for now, and until next time, thank you for watching.